So we are reading this Temple of Love. Today it's I think new page twenty three. Twenty three. Mm -hmm. Quotes of sharings with mm -hmm. Sri Patsada Maharaj. So this is from morning lecture, 26th February 2014, nine years ago. Mm. Maybe I was there. Maybe? Maybe. <laughs> okay. This is the nature of our soul, to love to develop feelings. That soul consciousness, that soul consciousness, we have to increase. <clears throat> mm. Then we have, oh, 14 years ago, summer, 2009, Croatia. Croatia, you are there? No. no. <laughs> Still not. 2009. The spirit of the Lord is... No, 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 more, more, more. Ah, sorry. It is very hard to give up the false ego. But there is one way. If we become proud, <laughs> if we become proud to be the servants of Srimati Radharani, then our false ego will vanish. Mm. This is interesting mm. for me. So this is very interesting Guru David's words. <clears throat> because interesting, we have only one ego. Material ego or false ego. False ego means material ego. I'm this body, I'm, I'm controller, I'm enjoyer, whatever belong to my body is mine. This is material ego, is called the false ego. But uh, another ego is spiritual ego. Real. Real ego. <laughs> I'm Radha Dasi, I'm made servant of Radha Rani. Or any identification. I am friend of Krishna. Or I am mother of Krishna. Mother of Radha. Or mother of Radha. Any spiritual identification is okay. But especially Mahaprabhu given us, uh, this is, I am Radha Dasi. So, our mind, can have or our ego has only one ego either material ego or spiritual ego it's like ego means i am yes means i am 
who I am. If we ask who am, who I am, who am I? This Sanatana Gosami asking to Mahaprabhu, Keami. <laughs> Everybody thinking I'm great scholar, I'm Brahman, like this. But I don't know who am I. That is my problem. Then Mahaprabhu's answer is very general answer. Jibera swarupa hai krishnera nitya das. I am servant of, eternal servant of Lord Krishna. That is general uh, teaching of Mahaprabhu. But the more deep teaching is I am a maid servant of Radhika. So Gurudev is saying very simple way, if we have this Swarupa identification, spiritual identification, then our false ego will go. And Birapak Sumanjari, one bus, I forgot any bus. I want to mark maid servant of you, means Swamini. Because Swamini has a red track on the feet, soul of heat, and then some or other rather kicked uh, the Torashi man Torashi's, uh, you know, like shoulder or face, whatever, <laughs> wherever. <laughs> <laughs> then he's very proud. I'm marked to maid servant of Sri Radha. <laughs> so this is real identification. This is actually very beautiful. Oh, our Gora Chandra also is there. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, so Gora Chandra, so anytime you want to share, please welcome. So this Gurudev is very simple. Actually, give up for the ego is very difficult, not so easy. But if identify, I'm maid servant of Swamini, Shri Radhika, then easy to give up for the ego. Wow, Gurudev is so nice and easy, but not so easy. <laughs> easy? But uh, I don't know. Someone is very easy. Someone <laughs> may not be easy. Uh, sorry, uh, we need to check. Uh, no sound. Sound not good. Gora could you listen nicely? Could you hear Gora Okay. Okay. Seems like nice. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, much. I'm listening. Wow. Oh. If you want to share, please share. Whatever you feel. It. Okay. Okay. Rade. Okay. <clears throat> I found one YouTube channel mm -hmm. from one German devotee, Iskon devotee. Mm. And he talking many very interesting things, different subjects, Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, like this. So, but I recognize that something is missing. He explains so nice about teachings of Prabhupada, everything, but something is really missing. And this is the spiritual identity. I see also many devotees. I know many devotees from that time. Already maybe I know them 25 years. Mm. I remember na, some, oh, I met them before and <laughs> like, but nothing changed so much. They are not coming to the point to choose 
their personal relationship, what they want to practice, how they want to practice the relationship, they don't come to this point. Still they're talking about all the avatars and Krishna and Dvaraka and sometimes like a friend and sometimes dancing with the gopis and but without my own spiritual identity, my real ego, <laughs> I'm always watching from the false ego, from the Saraka Deha, thinking I am Nitya Krishna Das. But real identity never become clear. They say it will be revealed when we are completely purified, then Krishna will come and tell you what is your relationship. They think like this mm. and actually make me a little sad to see that. Mm. <laughs> because purification never ends. always will think later it will happen, later it will come, later, later. No? <coughs> and they also, they only see Raghunath Das Goswami, Rupa Goswami, Prabhupada. They see everyone only with the perspective of Rupa Goswami. They don't see Rupa Manjari. They only see Raghunath Das Goswami, they don't see Tulasi Manjari. They see only outside the teachings and the books of Rupa Goswami and they follow that for preaching. But they never understand the bhajan, the inside practice of Rupa Goswami and Raghunath Das Goswami. What is their practice? They don't, they don't catch the point. And I feel so fortunate that Gurudev is teaching this to us. That the false ego only will disappear when we can identify with our real ego. My real ego. <laughs> my spiritual identity. Yeah. Very interesting realization. I could see that happening. Yeah. Thank you, Gurudev, for giving us this. I think many senior Vaishnavas, like Jayananda Maharaj, they also have this experience. Mahanidhi Swami, Madan Gopal Das, he also has same experience, right, Jayananda? <laughs> yes. And, yeah. Go, Goranga Sundar, Goravani, Suniti, probably they have all the same experience. After 25 years of practice, still I don't know who I am. <laughs> Yes, Radhe Radhe. Oh, Suniti. Wow, welcome, Suniti. Oh, really. no. We need you. Radhe Radhe. <laughs> I need you. Goa <laughs> Sunda wants to share something on this point. You inspired him so much. Well, sure, sure. Welcome, welcome. We need you, Gaurasandra. I listen to the sweet words of Noah Chanda. Radhe, Radhe. Wow. So, he is right. The problem is, when I listen to that, that if you have a blind man and he understands that he is blind, then you can show him 
what you see. But if there is a blind man, he thinks he is not blind and he can see everything. How you can teach this? When this happened, <clears throat> if you have a person who really thinks that he is realized and knows everything, this person you cannot teach. Even if you see the truth, but he will not accept. Is it clear for this point? Yes, yes, you are right. No, this, this blind man <clears throat> has to understand this. He see only uh, his own, he can touch and he can understand the forms of different things by touching, but maybe he cannot see what is 10 meters before him. So, but this is also a point. We was there in the same situation, maybe one, one year before, 10 years before, or one or 10 lifetimes before. We was on the same point. And by the mercy of our Gurudev, and accept him, his teachings, we got the, the eyes to see. And um, yes, it depends on the point. Where are you in the just right in, the, in that moment now? No? And accepting that you are blind. Maybe for others who are more elevated than us, we are also blind. We also cannot see the truth. And so we are very happy that our Gurudev is so, um, we has us, uh, yes, he is generous to us and he is always merciful. He is not judging. So because we are also not uh, in, in the, in the, in the fast, in the last uh, uh, realization, because m many of us never realized the uh, the, the uh, spiritual body or saw themselves in the spiritual body or has some relationship like Raghunath does. And so this is <clears throat> this to understand for us, we are here in the in the in the ISKCON center also, Gurachanda, and and uh, we we see this many times that uh, many of them think they have a fixed position and they are right, but um, nobody asks for more to understand maybe some more. You no, know? and this we we have here in our place. We have to accept this. If someone come and has some question, we can give answers. Nasuniti. But not so, that, that not uh, come so often that uh, someone is uh, asked some questions. <laughs> oh, and Jainanda Maharaj, this is the verse 17. With the marked maidservant. Uh -huh. I also yeah. like it very much because Gurudev is uh, expressing that this marked maidservant means the one who is really touched by Shimati Radhika mm. and uh, got the mercy of fully accepted and fully in devotional service. Thank you for bringing this up. <laughs> Okay, let us continue. Is it okay? Mm. <laughs> 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 
from Bible. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. The Lord has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, to recover the sight of the blind, to release the oppressed, to pro proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Gurudev explains that there are three important things here. The Spirit, God, and Jesus. The Spirit is the energy of God. God is the person God. And Jesus is the self-realized Master. Wow. So, Guru Dev is also saying the same thing. We need soul consciousness or swarupa consciousness. Who am I? Then we need Ishta Deva, a person who related and we want to love and serve object. <laughs> And also, Jesus means we need Shri Guru who can guide us. So this three thing is the same in Christianity. Christianity says the Spirit, God, and Jesus. We may say like a soul, Vasvarupa, and Ishtadeva. And our Shri Guru Dev, spiritual master. So this is Christianity also same, huh? very, very interesting. And Guru Dev also many times saying. Gurudev explained what means to be anointed. The Lord gave His mercy to Jesus and made Jesus self-realized. Imbibed him with the Guru potency. So Jesus was able to preach good news to the poor. <coughs> Who is poor? Everyone in the bodily conception of life is poor. We all are.
What means freedom for the prisoners? Who is a prisoner? Again, we all are. Prisoners in our body. Ruled by the senses. No peace. Always pain. <laughs> so this uh, this anointed me. For me, I remember this was Punemanjana Churita Bhakti Birochanena Santa Sadaiva Hira E Shibirokayanti. Yansha Sundara Matin Chaguna, eh? Yansha Masundara Machin Chaguda Swarupam Gobinda Madi Purusham Tamaham Bajami. So, someone who anointed means someone who has a vision of love, of prema. They can see everything uh, spiritual, everything for the service of our Lada Moha. And uh, here, uh, Gurudev mentioned, the Lord gave his mercy to Jesus and made him self-realized, imbued him with good potency. <laughs> Maybe if I, if we want to explain is maybe we can say Bhagavad Gita, 18 chapter, 78 verse, purport of Pavupada. Uh, natural, I forgot the verse. <laughs> I, could, I will bring it. Yeah, Gurudev used to say this very important explanation of Pavupa. Gurudev loves this verse. 18th chapter. Last, last verse, actually. Last box of Pavupada's explanation. So, so, so let me read. The living entity in his original position is pure spirit. He is just like an atomic particle of the Supreme Spirit. The conditioned living entity, however, is a marginal energy of the Lord. He tends to be in contact with both the material energy and the spiritual energy. In other words, the living entity is situated between the two energy of the Lord. Because he belongs to the superior, superior energy of the Lord, he has a part particle of independence. By proper use of that independence, he comes under the direct order of Krishna. Thus he attains his normal condition in the pleasure-giving potency. This this good potency, literally say, karuna shakti, but also here we may understand this normal condition in the pleasure-giving potency, means fradini shakti. This is Shrimati Radhika's protection, Shrimati Radhika's energy. So this is, I feel, and also Gurudev's explanation is super wonderful. 
because we are thinking some are, some are who is poor. We are thinking, oh, lack of money. Oh, so many miserable conditions. Like a disease, like bankrupt, many problems in this life. We are thinking, oh, he is poor. But the Guru Dev's explanation is so clear. Everyone in the bodily conception of life means bodily consciousness is poor. Because he or she does not know reality. We are spirit soul. We have spiritual identity. We are Radha Dasi. So if we have this bodily conception, conception of life, we are pri you know, we are like a prisoner. We cannot get out of this body, bodily. And before I was IGM as a society, I don't understand Bajan's meaning. Even now I may not understand, but uh, especially at that time I don't understand what does it mean Bajan? Bajan just chanting the holy name? That's what I was thinking. Or singing the holy name. This is Bajan. So because of, I, I, I am, I was in bodily conception of life. So I don't understand. But the Guru Dev is very clear. <coughs> Anyone who is, is, is in the bodily conception of life is poor. This is very amazing words, clear words. Rade, rade. <clears throat> what is freedom? Only Realizing the self as a soul brings freedom, brings liberation. Not waiting to die and then freedom. No, during this life, freedom is possible by realizing the soul and the soul's eternal relationship to Krishna. What means blind? Our eyes blinded by ignorance. We are ignorant of our true self, of our beloved God. So the great masters came to give freedom, to open our eyes for divine knowledge, Divya Gyan, and ultimately to open our eyes for divine vision.
Tarungovinda speaks now. This may be upper side. Ah, this upper side. Yes. Anyway. We are spiritually brothers and sisters. And our goal is to increase our consciousness and to be together to increase our real identity with loving feelings and with service. I request that uh, we have to come forward to show our feelings and to coordinate together with your Gurudev's advice and your service. We have to relate to each other. Relation is important. To share your feelings, that is family. So I feel now Gurudev is commenting on this. Mm -hmm. The main helper in Bhajan Sadhana is the mind. The mind is the Lord of the senses. The mind of a materialistic person is by nature restless and attached to the sense objects. In Bhagavad Gita 6.34 Arjuna tells, tells Krishna, the Lord, O oh Krishna, the mind is restless, disturbing the senses, powerful, tenacious, and to control him seems to be more difficult as to control the wind. Krishna agreed. Krishna said, O oh, mighty armed one, undoubtedly it is very difficult to subdue the naturally restless mind, but it can be done. It can be done through exercise and through detachment. By understanding how difficult and hard it is to subdue the mind, the sadaka will slowly walk the path of auspiciousness.
any stream of thoughts that emanate from our mind keeps a deep impression or conditioning samskara within our subconsciousness and all these samskaras impressions form make our nature svabhava just as our present nature is the result of previous impressions and conditions our future nature will be the result of our present customs well, i think this is quite the important point i feel because whatever we have this body and whatever we are thinking or some nature this is coming from this gurudev say aggregate of these sanskaras form our swababa so every moment every day's impression or thought give us some kind of what to say uh, sanskara sanskara here say deep impression and conditioning like uh, say we have uh, like a white cross and if we are washing some kind of some say blue colors water and then become blue if we wash red colors water then become red like if we know like holy time some person give us some kind of throw away some colored also sometimes they throw away water of colored you know colored water then our cross is colored by this flower you know this kind of powder or waters so similarly our material uh, subtle body nature also slowly slowly changing now our spiritual sadhana is say but we do same thing but in spiritually we made meditate our spiritual body then our always spiritual impression spiritual feeling we try to try to uh, keep or give some impression to our mind our our also what is say our nature then our nature slowly slowly changing imbued with love or imbued by spiritual feeling if someone want to be manjari we are following Rupa Manjari or Torasi Manjari, Rati Manjari. And then that Manjari is feeling, uh, infuses 
And slowly, slowly, our nature is changing. Or slowly, slowly, our spiritual body is more, what do you say, manifest or more clearly manifest. Material activity we are preparing to make next like material body. But a spiritual life means we are, we are preparing to make spiritual body. So Guru Dev is therefore saying 24-7 we try to meditate in a swarup our spiritual body and try to be conscious of we are made servant of Radhika. So therefore this, it is up to us. We want to, we want to, what do you say, uh, we want to make or we want to breed this material feeling or we want to grow or breed and, and spiritual feeling or spiritual body. So therefore, Guru Dev is saying, don't check others. Check myself. How our mind is going, what we are thinking, what we are meditating, that is important. So Radhika is always meditating Krishna. So therefore, Radhika is most Krishna conscious. And Manjari was thinking always Radha and Radha's Moha. So we want to follow our Rupa Ragunata, Rupa Torasi Rati Manjaris. This I, f I, I'm feeling this one. Radha Radha. Or if somebody could add or explain more, welcome also. Radhe Radhe. Wow. Welcome. Radhe. I think I I think um I don't want to explain more. I want to explain less. And so very high. It's so very high your way of explaining Jainanda Maharaj. It's so it's very beautiful and and very um realized and um it makes me want to find a way to live this to live these very high thoughts and maybe i can take two examples from what we've said now one is the goal of always meditating on the spiritual body and the other is always meditating on being a servant of Radhika and both of these are are very very high like you describe but also very simple Meditating on our spiritual body means realizing that what we are already doing, every action in our daily lives, has a grain of love in it. That nothing happens in our lives that does not have at least a tiny grain of love in it. We're not robots. We're not uh, Siri uh, iPhone beings. The difference between us and robots is that we have a grain of love in what we do. This grain of love is the grain of our spiritual body.
meditating on our spiritual body means meditating on the love that's in our actions. Thus Gurudev's anthem, love in action. Love in action does not mean let's do our actions and maybe we'll sprinkle a bit of love on top like salt or pepper on a on a piece of uh, food. No, love in action means realizing that to act is to mobilize our love. But there's no action without love. So meditating on our spiritual body means opening our eyes to the love in our, in our lives. In other words, opening our eyes to the spiritual life in our lives. It's maybe not fully developed. It's not, maybe it's not all of our lives, all of our actions. Maybe it's only a little part of what we're doing, but it's a part. So meditating on spiritual body means meditating on the love that happens in everything I do, from driving my car to to doing my job at, at the office or to cleaning my house. There's a little bit of love in that, and that love is exactly my spiritual body. Increase it. Meditating on, serv- on being a servant of Radhika means meditating also on the love we put into our lives. Because being a servant of Radhika means increasing the love in in the world. It means giving to Radhika the tools to love Krishna more intensely, giving her our love, dedicating our love, focusing our the, the, the love in our daily lives on, onto her. So both of these tasks, uh, meditating on the spiritual body and meditating on being a servant of Radhika, are very high and very complex, but they're also very simple. They involve realizing what we can do with our hearts, realizing what we can do with the love in our hearts, realizing what we already do with the love in our hearts and how maybe it can be um, increased. Wow, beautiful. Very beautiful. By giving up. Our mundane impressions, <clears throat> samskaras, and developing a spiritual impression, samskara, we can gradually control the mind. We can walk on the path of bhajan. There is no other way than this. Srila Raghunath Das Goswami very tenderly, gently, addresses his mind. 
Aragonath is saying, Oh mind, my brother, I hold your feet. I pray to you with flattering words. Please listen. First of all, please always give up pride, Damba. False pride, false ego, deceitfulness. Crookedness, are all understood to be pride, Damba. For innumerable births, our sanskara conditioning and impression has been identified with our material bodies and everything related to our material bodies. This bodily consciousness is a great obstacle to progress in devotional practice. Srila Narottam Das Thakur sings in Prem Bhakti Chandrika. The proud non-devotees are the lowest people in the world. Their endless thoughts are all in vain. Waste of time. In order to destroy this false pride. The devotee should try to develop humility. Humility is considered to be the life force, life of devotion. So this is, I guess, I think, very important point. And this mention, <laughs> in order to destroy this false pride, the devotee should develop humility which is considered to be the life force of devotion. So, the other time we are discussing humility and love is almost nearly equal. And also, Appreciation, thank, thankfulness, also quite nearly equal. And uh, in Chaitan Charita Murita, Kabiraj Goswami saying, every day now in Mungeraj Mandir, we are chanting in Shikshashtaka, all verses. 
among the eight verses, all important, very important. But among these eight verses, especially Kabiraj Goswami was saying, Tunada peace ni chena, taro riba sahi shununa, amani na mana de na, kiruta ni asada hari. We have to be tolerant more than three. We have to be more humble than blade of grass on the street. And then pay respect to all living entities. Then we could chant holy name continuously. Because we are sub, we are not master, we are servant of the Lord or servant of our Swamini. Or servant of servant of servant of our Swaminis. Actually, we have seen maid servant of Radharan is highest, she has highest love, they have highest love. But same time, they are lowest position in the gopis, among the gopis. But in spiritual world, it's interesting. Lowest person become highest love. <laughs> Lowest person has highest love. <laughs> highest person become lower love. So Krishna realizes, oh my God, if I, I, if I keep position of my Supreme Lord, I cannot taste Radha's love. Radha's feeling, I cannot taste it. I have to be position of servant of Swamini. So Krishna was thinking like this. Then Krishna was thinking, okay, let me become devotee. But not to, but this devotee should be same feeling of Radhika, also same color of Radhika's body. I should steal, I, my name is Hari. I should steal Radhika's feeling and also Radhika's bodily color. And then Krishna become Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And then Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's greatness is like this. Now I want to taste Radhika's feeling, Radhika's love. Also now I understand Radhika's glory, also my sweetness tasted by Radhika. Oh, so wonderful, incredible. My body becomes slacken. My body becomes like totas. And then Mahaprabhu thinking, oh my God, this is so nice. I should distribute it. So Mahaprabhu exhibit something, but Mahaprabhu entrust Sri Rupa and Sri Ragunata and also Sri Sanatana. You should, you may distribute this feeling, this bubble Urasaras. Most highest feeling which Radhika's maid servant could taste. This is most precious thing, but I want to distribute freely because I am feeling of Radhika. Motherly feeling, very, very generous feeling. So, Rupa, no, Sanatana, Rupa, Lagunata, all Goswamis, they are distributing this feeling, especially Lagunata's, 
Goswami's wrote Virapaks Manjari. This is amazing. How he is practicing, how he is tasting, how he is meditating in Sadaka Deha and Siddha Deha. He disclosed all in detail to the, to us. How many years ago? Maybe 30 years ago. I was listening from one Goswami's from Brindavan Mahimamrita. And then at that time, that, that person said, oh, I want to know Manjari. But uh, to become Manjari, we have to know in detail how to decorate Radhika, you know, how to serving Radhika. But at that time, I was wondering, where can I learn this one? I don't know anything. And that, that Goswami did not disclose this secret. And later on, we could find out, oh, this is Birapak Manjari. But by reading Birapak Manjari, we cannot understand. We need the mercy of Rashka Vaishnava. We need mercy of someone who is, who has Manjari Baba, Baba Urasarasa. So this is difficult to get it. <laughs> so by divine arrangement, by radical mercy, so all we get the mercy of our Gurudev, Sadhu Maharaj. For me, it's incredible. Because, so everybody thinking, you know, reading, hearing, Birapas Manjari, this ordinary, but I, I don't think so. This is very, very high, very, very difficult. I was reading one article, one IGM Goswami's. <laughs> and he's saying, I don't know Radha Rasas Danidi. I know only here a few bars. So I cannot explain to this. This is Guru. Who has hundreds of disciples. This is reality. So I'm so much grateful of, you know, I'm so much grateful of our Gurudev, Sadhu Maharaj, and also Anandas Bhaj Maharaj, who wrote such wonderful commentary. And also someone who translate this book also, I'm so much grateful. That's, you know, honest feeling. So I, maybe I talk a lot, but uh, this, this is the point is, I think, very, very important point. This humbleness. So we want to learn humbleness from Gurudev or other advanced Vaishnavas. This is a way to, to attain uh, our Swarupa and our, our Swarupa city. That is my feeling. Rade, rade. Rade. Very nice, Jananda Maharaj, how you explain your feelings. And I agree, we are all very lucky to have this kind of blessing and association. Because the love of Rindavan and the love of a maidservant, it is not something that I ever felt that anybody of the human people that I met my life so far was emanating so obviously like the people from Rindavan. 
It is true, we are all having some love and we are all loving. We know that we belong to love somehow. Otherwise, it would not be possible to, to live in the world where we need to talk about how to love. <laughs> Because this world has a lot of challenges and many situations where we feel out of love. But the love of Srimati Radhika or the bridge Basis who love her so much, the Dasis, it has a special quality. It has a special flavor of sweetness. That is the flavor of unconditional, of selfless love. And that is something I feel I am not so good at it. <laughs> I have learned how to be very calculated. I have learned how always to exchange love when I receive love. <laughs> But how to love when there's nothing in for me. How to love when I am beaten like Jesus. That is another quality. That is the divine love that is not under any circumstances it will decrease. So I feel the same that we are hearing now about the love of the Brajpasis, those who are living in the consciousness of Vrindavan, of eternal happiness and eternal beauty and poetry and dance and eternal, you know, enchantment. That is something is very difficult to have it all the time here in this tempor temporary world. But the soul, me I, as a soul, I am very greedy for this. And like we hear, the birds of the same feather like to flock together. Like, for example, when I wanted to learn how to drive a car, I was so excited. Why? Because I thought I will never learn how to drive a car. It's very complicated. <laughs> I see the people driving a car, maybe I was 16, 17, 18, and I think it's a miracle. They are holding the hands in the wheel, and then the, in the right hand they are holding the stick for gearing, and then two feet, one is for gas and one is for braking, and the eyes have to look on the road. And I thought it's too complicated. I will never learn how to do it. But just see how it worked out. There is a driving uh, teacher next to me. They know how to drive. And they have a faith in me that I can also learn how to drive. So I feel with the spiritual realization, it's the same. I feel this is so very complicated, it's so high, I can never reach it because I am very uh, conditioned soul. But here there's Gurudev, my Vaishnavas, all my friends are sitting next to me and behind me and they are telling, you can do it. We are all learning how to drive and how to surf. Shimate Radhika. So this is the, I think this is the miracle. We are so lucky that we can be very close to the persons who know already how to love on this very sweet level of selfless 
love to the divine. Tushi Mate Radhika. And they are, because just by sitting close to them, you remember that when you were dry, learning how to drive a car, just sitting close to the driver's uh, assistant, I mean the teacher, I felt completely more empowered. <laughs> and after some time, it became natural, it became more secure, and it, I, don't, I cannot explain how it works to learn it. But only I can see and say from my experience, being close with those who are driving their cars, who are living in their spiritual self, it just colors off. It comes slowly, but surely. And it will stick with the soul. The body we have to leave one day, yes. But the soul travels to the lotus feet. And why not start now? Our soul's journey and our servitude to Shimate Radhika. We are sitting close to very good people in our lives. And I have the hope that this will color my heart with the love for Radha Mohan, Shimate Radhika, and give this confidence that it will surely come one day, little by little. Even though it might uh, seem very far away now, but it will come sooner than every one of us will think, just by being in the good birds association, the flying birds of Srimati Radhika's Seva. <laughs> Radhi. Oh, I love this story, Suniti Didi. I'm laughing, I'm smiling with a big smile. I'm laughing out loud. It's, uh, you got it right on. You got it right on, I think. It's so difficult for us because it's so easy, in a way. <laughs> we go around and we talk like being the Dasi is climbing Mount Everest. <laughs> but the reality is that we are actually hardwired as Radha Dasi. We're made to be lovers. That's the starting point. So the question is, like Prabhupada tells us, is, you know, how to get back to who we are, how to fall back to who we are, to rediscover who we are. We're thinking it's hard, but it's it's really easy. It's just getting out of our own way. Our bodies, our souls want to be Radhadasi. We're born this way. This is the constitutional position. This is what a soul is. It's a servant of love, a Radhadasi. So our battle, our struggle is just to get the nonsense out of our way. And then the driving school exam. <laughs> Metaphor is so perfect, Suniti, <laughs> that, um, you know, it's impossible. All these levers and pedals and start and stop and blink and right and left and what, but no, it's just going forward. And the other thing that's so beautiful, Suniti, is that you, you, that what you said, you cannot learn it by explanation. You have to learn it by the driving instructor sitting there next to you <laughs> and driving with you. What's important to us is that you cannot learn it from explanation. You have to feel it from association. Most of all with Gurudev and other sadhus, and then also with other, other Vaishnavas. That what the message we really need to get across is the one that cannot be given in, in the books and cannot be getting, get gotten by climbing Mount Everest of the soul, but rather by falling down to who we are. We're natural born lovers, natural born lovers. So the only challenge is, is to get the other nat stuff out of the way that's blocking that identity. Wow. 
Thank you very much. Suniti and Uddhava. Thank you very much. Very beautiful. Deceitfulness, living in lie, living opposite of the truth, and crookedness. Hypocrisy, pretending, are other great obstacles to devotional advancement. The Lord will never want to bestow his mercy on a pretentious, crooked person. Therefore, Ragunat says, O oh mind, always give up Damba, vanity. It is a powerful obstacle to bhajan. Instead, become very attached to sweet spiritual objects. My blessings and well wishes to all. Your Sadhu Maharaj. Wow. How you act in your life is your bhajan. Without bhajan, we never become soft. I am in love with you. Therefore, I see you everywhere. Everywhere I see you, my dear, I never want to forget you. Bhajan should not be exposed to anyone. You should not tell to others the way you perform your bhajan. No one should know it. It's not a show. It does not require any advertisement. Let's say you have received Nam from a powerful source. If you expose it, your bhajan will be spoiled. It is like a light of a lamp on the threshold of house.
if it remains still, it will burn nicely. But if wind comes, it becomes unsteady. It may be extinguished. And what is the wind? It is the sound of our words. Whatever you do, you should not expose it by speaking about it. You should not say, I have done this much now, I've chanted so much. What you should expose is, Sir, I didn't chant any nam. I'm a fallen soul, sinner. There is no greater sinner than me. I'm the worst. Unworthy person in this world. Oh Lord, please bless me. Don't magnify yourself. This attitude is called huh, Asura Sapada. So, Gurudev, if you could do some comment and mercy upon us, it would be very nice about the bhajan, your feeling. Actually, many guests are there. Okay, good then. Okay. Some comments from Jaya Maharaj? Yeah. Or someone else? If someone could do some comment, it's very welcome. I'm not qualified to say so much. Repeat again. What is the line? Repeat again. Please. Read again. Yeah. Go to that. Okay. Bhajan should not be exposed to anyone. You should not tell to others how you perform your bhajan. No one should know it. It's not a show. It does not require any advertisement. 
Let's say that you have received Nam, holy name, from a powerful source. If you expose it, advertise it, your bhajan will be spoiled. It is like a light of a lamp on the entrance of a house. If it remains still, it will burn nicely. But if wind comes, it becomes unsteady. It may be extinguished. And what is that wind? It is the sound of our words. Mm -hmm. Radhe. If I might comment. So, I mean, bhajan, bhajan means two things in Sanskrit language, at least. One is prayer, to pray, to sing prayer, singing prayer. And the other is to be a vessel, to be a container. This means that true bhajan is the realization that I am not the origin of my prayer. I'm not the origin of my love, the love I feel for God. Doing bhajan means making oneself into a pipeline for For divine love. Bhajan means offering one's body as a servant for something much, much greater than we are. To sing with our voices, to carry out puja with our, with our bodies, to chant, to talk, to associate all as pipelines transmitting something that does not start with us and cannot end with us. Doing bhajan means passing along, passing along the love, passing along the energy of Radharani. So bhajan is never a me. God, look at me praying to you. I love you. I respect you. I bow down to you. Bahajan is erasing me to make Radharani's love flow through me. Radhe. Radhe. However, you do your bhajan, you should not expose it with your tongue. You should not say, I have chanted this much nam.
But what you should expose is, Sir, I have not chanted any nam. I'm a fallen soul, a sinner. There is no greater sinner than me. I'm the worst, the most unworthy person in this world. Oh my Lord, please bless me. Don't magnify yourself. Because this attitude is called Asura Sapada. So again, this is from Srila Bhakti Vaibhava Puri Goswami Maharaj, spoken in Vrindavan. Huh, 16th February, <laughs> 1992, 31 years ago. <laughs> 